Hello everyone, and welcome! Are you struggling in Darktide? Are you feeling a little bit lost? Do you need the guiding light of the Emperor to show you the way? Well, unfortunately, I'm not the Emperor, but there is a little bit of good news. I do have a couple of quick tips and tricks to help make sure that you have a much better time playing this game. Because it's a hell of a lot of fun, but definitely it is a game where there are nuances, there are layers. And just like ogrens and onions, it's important to know how to peel back these layers. Now granted, there are some other videos out there that will cover some of the things that I won't. For example, Milk and Cookies, he did a great video that's about half an hour long, which is all the general broad spectrum stuff that you should know when you step into Dark Tide. However, today's video that I'm making is a little bit different. This is some of the nitty gritty stuff. This is just the small things that you learn with a little bit of time spent in the game and just playing around with what you can do. So this video is generally aimed at beginners, but even if you've spent a fair bit of time playing Dark Tide, maybe there's one or two things that you will pick up on and hopefully then it benefits you. But without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Did you know that if you are playing the Psyker, you don't actually need a direct line of sight once you have started a brain burst attack? As long as you see that aura around someone's head, you are going to get the kill. You've locked on. So then as long as you complete the brain burst, you're done. You're sorted. Congratulations. You are now a deadly Psyker. So on those harder difficulties or hectic moments, you can use this to duck out of cover, lock onto an enemy, and go straight back into cover while you complete the brain burst to take out high value targets. It's really good for taking out armored enemies. If you do have a Psyker in your squad and this still isn't happening all the time, then you can make their job a little bit easier by marking your targets. This is something that everyone in the squad can do. And if your Psyker is decently switched on, you're gonna have a much easier time because they can just turn around, see that the enemy is marked and then just brain burst them straight away. A lot of the weapons in this game, they have some good stuff about them, and they also have some bad stuff. So figuring out what enemies you're going to be good against, and what enemies you're going to have trouble with, is really important. So make sure that you use the Meat Grinder. The name is freaking awesome, but it is basically a practice range where you can figure out what weapon combinations are going to work best for you. The reason why I suggest this is because you need to understand what enemies have different levels of armor, because there is unarmored, there is flak armor, and then there is carapace armor. The enemies that wear carapace armor are very difficult to take down because they get so much protection from it, and a standard light attack with a lot of weapons won't actually penetrate the armor to do decent damage. So if you see this blue symbol with a bit of a hit marker, you, you may think that you're doing a little bit, but it's actually shit all. So for a lot of weapons, you're better off doing a heavy attack so that way you can actually get some damage in. Obviously, some weapons have special abilities and attacks which will penetrate armor better. The axes, if you have an overhead strike, you'll be able to use that against armored enemies. But the point still stands. You want to be able to figure out where your weapons are going to be effective and where they're going to struggle. Because some enemies have flak armor around most of them and carapace armor around certain parts. And it's honestly a lot easier to pick up on if you just go into the meat grinder and just spend a little bit of time playing around with each of the different opponents that you'll come across in your various missions when playing Dark Tide. 
Some of you may not know this, but ranged weapons also have a special attack or a special ability. So for some guns, that is being able to have a torch on them, and in other guns, that is being able to have a melee attack that you can do with the gun. So if you're trying to just get that final kill on a weak enemy, and you know they're on death's door, but they just need a little bit more convincing, then yeah, you can just hit them with a melee attack. For some guns, it's like where you use the gun butt to hit the enemy, and for others, you actually get a little bayonet on top, and you can just do a little stabby stab. So, yeah, it's pretty cool, and it's a nice feature to be able to use if you know it's there. My only problem with this is that switching to your melee weapon in this game is very fast. It's almost instantaneous. So using a melee with your gun, which does significantly less damage, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, it's just my idea, but if you were to get some kind of a bonus for getting a melee kill with your weapon, then I think that would be nice. Like, you give someone a stabby stab with the bayonet, so because of that, your next reload is twice as fast. I mean, something to just incentivize this feature, I think, would be a cool idea. The torches are also really useful on maps where you have limited visibility because some of the special conditions where there's like fog and stuff will really get in your way. So if you are a long range class like the veteran sharpshooter, a torch is actually useful. When you're trying out a weapon, make sure that you try different variants of it because there are weapons in this game that will have the exact same name and the exact same appearance, but the stats of them will be different. And things like the ammo that you get in a magazine and how much you can carry will also vary. So when you try out a gun and you don't like it, don't immediately think that the weapon itself is bad because it may have just been a bad variant. The auto guns, I think, are notorious for this. I think some people absolutely love them and some people hate them based on the variants they tried. If you're like me and you enjoy spending your hard-earned money in the in-game store to be able to buy a lot of weapons, then you'll find yourself running out of funds pretty quickly, especially towards later levels. However, something that you may not know is that you can recycle or sort of remove your weapon and get some money back instead as well. It's pretty good because you get some money back, but it also helps to clear up your inventory so that you know what your main weapons are. If you're running around on some of the missions, make sure that you keep an eye out for these kind of door switches. These are actually able to open up a little bit more of the map to you, and you'll actually sometimes be rewarded with a couple of chests or crates that you can get some ammo or plasteel from. So some of these switches will allow you to have a bit more ammo, but other times they'll actually give you a better angle on a certain part of the map. So if you're playing on a harder difficulty, this could be a nice way to flank around if you're cornered, and it can be just a nice trick to have up your sleeve. Have you ever been running around and seen some yellow dots on your screen? Well, these are actually a little indicator that there is a chest that you might find a little bit of ammo inside. So particularly for missions where you have limited visibility and there's a lot of fog and smoke, just seeing this yellow dot through the smoke can sometimes point you in the right direction, so that way you don't miss out on any ammo, because for some weapons in this game, you're going to absolutely shred through it in no time. But yeah, that's just about it for a couple of general tips that will be handy to make sure that the game is easier for you all to pick up on and to just kind of save you a bit of time and experience so that way you can jump ahead and already know a few of these important things. So I will probably call it at that for today. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. I hope that you've all been enjoying Darktide as much as I have. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments section down below, and I'll see you all on the next one. I've been Kiv, and I'm out.